I wonder what's in this box of nickels. Hey everyone, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure and we've got a nickel box to hunt today. So I got this nickel box at a bank that I haven't been doing a little bit. I've been really trying to mix up my banks. I've been trying to go to my dime banks and get nickels and my nickel banks and get dimes or pennies and you name it. Just trying to uh, kind of play the roulette a little bit, if you will. Now, if the bank's hitting, I keep going back and getting that denomination. But nickels have been a little bit hit and miss over the last several boxes. I've actually had about three boxes that I didn't even post because it was just a bunch of early Jeffersons. And I've got a couple of boxes still to post that did have some pretty cool finds in them, but nothing crazy. I haven't had a box with more than one silver or more than one buffalo in a while, and I'm hoping that this box produces that. That being said, you guys know the routine. I've opened the box. It's definitely circulated nickels. It's a little bit uh, trashed. I got a funny story about this. You'll see the rolls are a little bit dirty, and they even got some grass on them. Because after I opened it at the bank, when I was walking it indoors, it was raining, and a couple of the rolls fell out, and when I went to catch them, more rolls fell out. So I had to scoop them off the grass, throw them back in the box, what a mess. So as we go through this hunt, it wouldn't surprise me if we encounter some grass. Man, it was a mess. Maybe it was a good mess because it's gonna lead to something good in the box. Who knows? Enough rambling, let's kick off the hunt. I'll be checking for enders along the way and loop you in if there's something worth showing. Roll two, off to a quick start. Got our first 40s nickel of the box. It's a 46, Philadelphia. Roll number four, last coin in the roll is a 40s nickel. And it's a 1940 Philadelphia at that. Roll number 12, gonna have our third 40s nickel of the box. 1947, Denver. Roll number 15, gonna have our fourth 40s nickel. 1940, Philadelphia. Roll 21 is gonna produce our fifth 40s nickel, and it's another 1940. So three from that same year. Roll 25, our sixth 40s coin, and this one's a trashed 41. Roll number 26, and we've got another 40s nickel. Another trashed 1941. San Francisco. Roll 28, you gotta laugh at the grass. But I do find another uh, 41, Philadelphia. Again, not in great shape, but we'll take it. Roll number 35, we're gonna have another 40s nickel here. This one's a 48, Denver. Same roll, guys. We got a 1950 sitting here. So I'm gonna preface this with uh, what I always say when I pull a 39 or a 50. I recently found a 39D, the last nickel I need to find on my own for my Jefferson nickel set. Now I've got the whole set because I've been donated a 50D but I've never pulled a 50D. Can this 1950, in pretty decent shape, pretty decent shape, can it be a 50D? Is that a 50D? We got a 50D, a 1950D, and it is in decent shape I have found a 1950D in circulation. I have now found every Jefferson nickel there is to find in circulation. It looks pretty good. A little bit of dirt on it, but you just ignore the dirt for a second. Look how crisp in God we trust is. He's even got some detail in his hair still. The fields don't look too bad. This one might have been in someone's collection for a while. And look at that rim. That's a nice tight rim too. A 1950D. Definitely a key date. Let's go ahead and grab the red book and look at the mintage. I think it's 2.6 million, but I could be off. Let's take a look. All right, everyone. 1950D on nickels. 
I was right, 2.63 million, just over. MS60 is $14. I don't think it's MS60. Man, it's pretty nice though. It is pretty nice. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It might be AU55. I could maybe squeeze a 58 out of it. It's got some toning. A little bit of dirt on Liberty, but that's just a little bit of dirt and toning. At the end of the day, not a lot of scratches, some hair detail, pretty good rim, pretty good lettering. Overall, it's not in bad shape. I don't think it's MS60, but it's definitely, definitely a good, a, definitely a good pull. My first one's in great shape. A little bit of scratches, like I said. That's why it's not going to get an MS grade, I don't think. But still, AU55, I would say all day. I'd be surprised if it dropped below AU50. And I wouldn't be surprised if it got an AU58 grade. So I will take that. I'm happy. What a great coin. One of the best ones you can pull other than a variety for the Jefferson Nickel set. Roll 39. Got another 40s nickel, and this one looks pretty good too. Yeah, not too bad looking. A 1940 Denver. More grass, but more importantly, roll 41, and we've got some colors here. So, figured I would open this with you guys. Take a look at this copper edged one. And it's just a 2004 D, so not the double die obverse 2004 P. But uh, interesting toning on the edge, kind of odd. It's really just gunky and dirty. And then we've got possibly a war nickel here. No, we've got a burnt buffalo. I might have a D mint mark. Let me, uh, let's look at this under the scope. Put it under the scope here. We'll see if there's a mint mark first. Hmm, it's pretty damaged down there. Probably just damage. And then the front. Yeah, that's worn slick. I don't think nicodating will help this because it's toned dark like this, and if I nicodate it, it'll be silvery right where it's nicodated, and it will stand out worse. Let me go wash it with a little warm soap and water, since it's already pretty toasty anyway, and we'll see what it comes out like. All right, guys, as expected, not much happened to it differently. Um, I don't see a mint mark, and you can almost make out a date. So the soap and water helped, but I don't think I can get a date on this. All right, guys, I'm done filling with this. My best guess based on what I see is a 1925 or a 1926. I'm pretty certain it's either one of those two, and it does not have a mint mark that I can tell. It's just some damage right down there. So I think it's a 25 or a 26 Philadelphia. We'll call it that. I have both of those for my set, so it's not a big deal. And uh, we'll leave it alone for now. Roll number 42. I got a first here, or maybe a first. Back-to-back -back 1941s in a roll. Looks like one is a Philadelphia. And the second one is a Denver. So two more 41s. That's five 1941s in this box. Roll number 45, guys. I've laid them out. I found a 1955D, and I always check the 1955D for the over mint mark D over S. There's a number one and a number two variety. The number two, you can see the edge of it right here, but you don't see any of the S in here or protruding left of the D. On the number one variety, you can see the loop inside of the S, and you can see the S coming out from the D as well as on top. So it's the more sought after variety. Extra fine is 12 bucks versus 10. Not a huge difference, but there's a difference. So I pulled this one out. Doesn't look like it's in bad shape. I would say it's at least extra fine. It might even be AU on the front. 
the back looks good too. So this might be at least an AU type uh, nickel, in my opinion. So I went ahead and stuck it under the microscope and let me show you what I see. Here's what I see under the microscope. In my opinion, I think I see part of the curve inside here and the S up here, sticking to the left, protruding to the left. Now it's also flattened a little bit that D, so you could argue that that's part of the problem, but if I flip it upside down, I'm fairly certain it looks like there's part of the S. It could not be, I don't know, it, it could just be damaged the way that that looks. So I'm asking for your opinion. I've looked at hundreds of these nickels. I've never had one even come close that I even considered maybe for a second that it was a D over S, but there's something in there. And it really feels like you can see the top of the S here and it's been flattened. Here's the picture, one more time. You've got it here. You can see it protruding out and the bottom comes out a little bit too. So it's very clearly, I mean, you could argue that some of that's damaged. Obviously mine's a little dirtier, not as clean. Could just be a damage D, but if that's a push to the side D, man, that's a dramatic push. And there is something in the middle there. Hard to tell for sure. Could this be a D over S? We'll flip it all the way around. Sure looks funny to me. Sure looks funny. I could be seeing things. After finding that 1950D, I'm a little excited, but man, I think I see something inside that D. I'm gonna pull it out for now. Would love to hear your thoughts. Could this be a 1955D over S number one? If it is, the condition's pretty good in my opinion. Still a cool find. We'll stick it up here for now, and we'll get back to the hunt. Roll 47, surprising enough, another 1941, Philadelphia. All right, everyone, another box of nickels hunted, and I will classify this as a pretty good box. We ended up with a whopping seven 2009s, but they're all Denver. I can't seem to find very many Philadelphia mints, but it makes sense of where my location is. A couple of odd toned coins that I kept, another one of those silver plated 83s, and then kind of an odd toned uh, 68S. I think it might've been a proof at one point, but you never know. We'll put it to the side. We got 13 from the 40s. Four 1940s, six 41s, a 46, a 47, and a 48. We got nine in the 50s. Find of the box, a 1950D, my first ever. Can't get mad at that. A 53, a 55, pretty nice shape, possible D over S. We'll take that as well. We got four from 57 and two from 58s to go along with a couple of really nice 60s coins. A 62 in really great shape. And a 64, common coin, but you don't find them like this very often. So I pulled it out, I'll probably hold on to it. And then either a 25 or a 26 Buffalo can barely read the date under certain lighting and under my loop, but it's a Philadelphia. I think it's 25 or 26. So in my opinion, one of my better boxes. Anytime I can pull a nickel I've never pulled and a very tough pull, along with a possible variety coin, a buffalo, a couple of nice coins, 709s, and 22 early Jeffersons, we'll take it. Hopefully you enjoyed this hunt with me. I know I did. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting. And thanks for watching.